Hi, my name is Jan Jongboom and this is a demonstration of doing firmware updates over LoRaWAN. Um, about three months ago, the LoRa Alliance finally has ratified a number of standards that are required to do um, effective firmware updates over LoRaWAN, which is typically a very low bandwidth uh, networking protocol. So we do that in a couple of ways. Uh, one, we do multicast, so it allows you to update a lot of devices at the same time. Um, and in addition, ARM has also added Delta updates here. So if only a small portion of your binary has changed, then that's the only thing we need to send over. Um, so for today, I have a um, LTEC FF1705 development board, which contains a Multitech X dot plus some external flash. And we require the external flash to actually store our firmware fragments. So three days ago, we published this repository, which is the um, example application for our firmware update solution that contains everything. Um, for the FF1705, this works just straight out of the box. Um, if you want to run this on any of the other 150 development platforms that um, Embed has, you need to do one little configuration, and that is setting up your uh, storage layer. So we don't know what kind of external storage that you have on your device, so that's what we set here. So we use an, uh, an eight we use a, a small external spy flash module, and we're telling here that on the first couple of pages, on the first uh, in total 768k of RAM, that's where we want to store our firmware fragments. That's kind of it. Um, you need to do this in two places. One in the application, and that's what we have here. And the second thing is in the bootloader. So we're using the standard bootloader that we use for a lot of other services as well to make sure that when we update the firmware, it always happens in a safe way. And when something goes wrong, we can always go back to a previous state. So um, to keep firmware updates secure, we need to generate a public-private key pair. So the public key is going to be held by the device, and the private key is going to be held by the OEM, or the device manufacturer. Whenever you want to send a new firmware update, you need to sign the binary with this private key. So it's really important that this key never leaks, because that allows other people to send or at least sign binaries on your behalf. And if they compromise your network server or manage to send that firmware update in any way to your device, that means your device might be compromised. Um, in addition, you want to configure a root of trust. And that is a, um, unique, uh, fun a unique identifier, 128-bit value, that is only known by the MCU. And this is shared between the bootloader and the application. Um, and this is to avoid uh, side channel attacks in your flash. So not that someone cannot hook up spy flash directly to an external microcontroller and write a new firmware image that way. Um, we have an insecure ROT included for the XDOT, but we have for a variety of platforms, we have proper setup, root of thrust implementations already there, and those are in the readme. Um, so we're going to create our public-private key pair, and that happens through the uh, signing tool. So the LoRaWAN the Phota signing tool um, can generate keys, it can sign binaries, and it can also create packets that you might give to your network server. So my domain here is uh, arm.com, and my model number is going to be the awesome 2000 And the domain and the model are important to differ between devices because it's kind of your last line of defense. If we manage to send a binary to a device that cannot support that firmware, um, we stop if the model number and the device name don't match. So every signed binary also includes a uh, identifier to say who created this device and what's the device model. So when I create this, um, I have now a update search file, and that contains the public key of um, of this private public key pair, and my private keys are in the photo keys directory. So with that already, we're ready to build our application. Um, we're going to build it with a tiny profile. Um, that removes a couple of features, builds with new lit nano, and that is because this device only has um, 32 kilobytes of RAM and does not have an external um, uh, secure element or a crypto accelerator. And the uh, public-private key the verification, whenever we send a new update, requires quite a little bit of RAM. So to be on the safe side on this device, we use the tiny profile. If you have a bigger device, you can omit that. Or if you have a crypto accelerator, that's also a way of dealing with that. So after the build is completed, we can copy the binary um, to our device. It's mounted as a flash storage device, like any other Embed OS device. 
So when we run this application, um, we start in the bootloader, which first does an active firmware integrity check, and after that copies the internal the firmware and internal flash to external flash, which we can use for Delta updates later. So it reads the built-in device EUI if you have one, um, and currently is connected um, to the network. Um, when that happens, it starts doing a uh, request, say, clock sync. So the clock sync spec is new, uh, is a new specification that we standardize as part of the firmware update specifications, and that allows you or device to have an accurate clock. Um, right now, we don't have anything running in the server to actually respond to those requests. Um, and we'll do that uh, in a little bit when we start doing firmware updates. So let's, let's prepare something. Um, let's go back to our IDE, and in main.cpp, we might change something um, whenever the device boots up. So, this is an update. Now we want to send a delta between the new firmware and the old firmware to a central location, in this case, um, well, our network server. So, we're going to take the current binary and if we're looking at a build folder, there are um, two binaries actually in here. One is called photo.bin, and that is the file that contains both the bootloader and the application. And the second thing is that we have a update.bin, and that is the application without the bootloader. And that is the application that we want to send to the network. We don't want to update the bootloader, it's actually impossible to do that. Um, so we only want to send the application. So let's copy that to a handy place and call it v1.bin and now we can compile our application again and this application we're going to call v2.bin so we have two binaries right now v1 and v2 we're going to generate the delta update and we're going to generate the delta update again with the signing tool um, so in here we say the old binary is v1.bin the new binary is v2.bin our output format here is packets plain and that is because our firmware update server wants you know, what kind of packets do we need to send. Um, part of the specification is that we um, we send data over multicast and we don't want devices talking back to the network saying I missed packet 5 or I missed packet 7 because your network is going to get flooded quite quickly. So for that we have a forward error correction um, application, um, a library, and that can recover from missed frames. So we send fragments, and then we send redundancy packets after. So if a device missed a packet, it can use that. So here we say we use fragment size 204, which is the maximum on spreading factor 12, and we have 10 redundancy packets. So when we run that, um, this gives us um, a v1 to v2, the text file. And that currently contains 13 lines. So the first one is the header, which tells the device how much packets are going to be coming and how much padding is at the end, etc. And after that there is um, 13 packets. So three for the actual update. This is a delta update, it can be actually really small, so there's a few hundred bytes. And after that a bunch of correction packets. So this is the file that you need to give to your network. Uh, as part of the release, we've added a small test script which runs with the open source LoRa server at I.O to actually deliver this over a multicast session. So let's send this file over. So we do this with uh, the uh, LoRa server.js script in the Fuota server. We send to our LoRa host, which runs on uh, somewhere locally in my network. We send on data rate 5, spreading factor 7, as we're in Europe. And we, as the packet file, we say v1 to v2. So when we start the session, the first thing we do is do a clock synchronization. Um, and clock sync is a new spec, also as part of the firmware update specifications, that allows devices that don't have an accurate clock to get um, a network at time from the network. So um, now we have an accurate clock on this device, and there's the GPS epoch, which is also very useful for a lot of other things. Right thereafter, we get a multicast setup request, which sends a encrypted key, which is then decrypted, um, and from there we derive a network session key, application session key, and a, um, a device address. Right thereafter, we send a fragmentation session, so saying we have two fragments coming, um, 204 bytes frag size with 53 bytes of padding. Um, and once that is all present, we are ready to actually start the multicast session. And that's going to happen in a little bit. All right, so we're a bit late. 
um, in this case, and that's because we're on this development time frame, but now you can actually see the patching process happen. So we see, so we get the firmware hash in the current slot, we get the firmware hash in the diff file, and then we start doing patching between these two files. So right now it's doing a ECDSA signature verification, so it checks if the binary was actually signed with the private key that belongs to this public key map. Um, in this case it is. So then we write the bootloader header and we reboot. Um, so now the uh, bootloader is actually updating the active firmware using slot 1. So now the new active firmware is valid, um, we copy it back into external flash um, and right thereafter we're ready to boot. And here we see our updated firmware. So this is a fantastic way and, uh, of doing firmware updates over LoRaWAN. As you can see here with a Delta update, just changing a couple lines of code can be done in about two minutes and just sending a couple packets over. And the beautiful thing here is that we can actually do this over a multicast session, updating every device that we have in the field in exactly the same way, minimizing the load on the network. This was Jan Jongman for ARM, and I would love to see what you're going to build with this. Thank you.